All right, welcome back to a new episode of YD Plays. Today we're actually going to start a new LP, which is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. This is one of my personal all-time favorite games. Probably my second favorite Zelda game of all time behind Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64. I'm going to go ahead and skip the opening, the uh, demo reel cutscene, and get straight to it. All right. What shall we name ourselves? I'm thinking maybe something along the lines of Whitey. Because that's my name in the fictional realm of the internet. So we're going to get a telepathic message from Princess Zelda here. I've never been actually clear as to whether she's communicating with us or whether she's communicating with our uncle, who's the guy with the big old mustache over there. So she's been trapped in the in Hyrule Castle, her own castle, by Aghanim the wizard. As you can see, we're playing the original Super Nintendo version, not the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, not really any particular reason, it's just most of the extra features aren't useful in a single-player playthrough of this. Because the uh, Game Boy Advance port, it has some translation updates and some minor bug fixes and such, but the main addition is the fact that it has the Four Swords multiplayer mode, which, obviously, I'm not going to be playing. Oh, I'm too short on magic power to use my lamp, so I opened my treasure chest after my uncle has left to go rescue the princess. It's weird because, like I said, I'm not sure whether she's communicating with us or whether she's communicating with our uncle. Uh, in all the artwork that you see of this game, it's her messaging Link. Well, Whitey in this case. It's her messaging Link telepathically, but, I mean, obviously your uncle can hear it too. Maybe she's just really good at telepathy and she can sort of project her voice all the way like in the entire room, communicate with multiple people at once. I've never heard of that, partic that particular kind of telepathy, but I'm sure maybe it exists. Well, if any kind of telepathy exists, I guess. So we're going to sneak into the castle here. I've played this game many times, of course. Probably, probably in the dozen range, 12 times-ish. I don't... Of course, just like with Yoshi's Island, I'm going to immediately embarrass myself by making many multiple stupid mistakes throughout this playthrough. Of course, I had to remember, even though I was just watching uh, one of my subscribers, one of my mutual subscribers, Johnny Marr, play this game, I just... <laughs> I had to freaking think about how to get into the castle. I am a sad individual. Uh, Whitey, I didn't want you to be involved in this. I told you not to leave the house. Take my sword and shield and listen. You can focus power in the blade. Hold the B button. Then release it using the secret technique handed down by our people. Whitey, you can do it. Save the princess. Zelda is your... A lot of people used to think that that was... That he was about to say Zelda is your sister. I think that's people just having you know, uh, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, flashbacks. I don't think that that was ever intended. Uh, Link and Zelda in other games in the Zelda continuity have been established as maybe lovers, maybe-ish. So that would be kind of creepy if descendants of theirs were brother and sister. Um, wait a minute. That actually makes sense. What am I talking about? It's never been completely established. Um, in Skyward Sword, they sort of showed that Link and Zelda maybe got together and established a new society, but it's unclear whether they actually established a uh, running bloodline. And it's still unclear to this day if every Link is related or if it's just every Princess Zelda, because obviously that's established since it's a royal bloodline anyway. So I've always found that interesting. 
I don't know. I um, have the Hyrule Historia book on my bookshelf. Maybe I should have read up on that, read up on the Link to the Past section before doing this Let's Play. Maybe I'll do that before I record more episodes so I can get my facts straight. But I'm an amateur Zelda mythology expert, which is a really good thing to tell girls or boys if you want to sleep with them because not that nerds aren't sexy but I don't know if anyone finds being an amateur Zelda mythology expert I don't know if anyone finds that to be an attractive feature in another human being maybe I'm wrong if you can meet a person who thinks that that's an attractive quality uh, marry that person pretty much immediately you're probably soulmates so we're gonna kill that guard there skillfully without taking any damage do some real pro shit we're gonna get that key from him and get the map press X to view the map of course uh, Y is your item button B is your sword slash and A you use to interact with objects and later on heh <laughs> die motherfucker later on you can uh, dash with the pegasus boots with the A button as well it is a sword duel to the death off the grimmest precipice. As you can see, I, uh, to demonstrate the concept of taking damage, I am letting them hurt me once in a while. It's not that I, it's not that I'm not an expert at this game, it's just that I want to make sure my viewers know what it looks like for Link to constantly get hurt. Obviously, I've named my hero Whitey. I'm still gonna call him Link because that would get confusing if I started referring to another person as Whitey. It'd feel like I was talking in the third person. And Whitey's just not into that, you know? So even though we skillfully avoided these guys with our stealthiness, like Solid Snack or whatever his name is, we're still gonna come over and club these guys to death with our tiny little... our tiny little... Booty 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 sword. So we're going to rescue Princess Zelda from her own castle. Um, I think at the end of the game... <laughs> spoilers. Not really. It's established that the that the wizard Aghanim has like persuaded the king at this point. He's taken him over and uh, maybe put him under a magical spell. So that's why the castle and all the guards are, you know, sort of taken over and... The guards are hostile toward Link, who's just a, like a village boy to them. I mean, why would you? I mean, obviously he's wandering through a castle, he shouldn't be, but I don't think that's immediate grounds to start stabbing him to death. Maybe I'm wrong there. So we're going to go fight this guy, who's a big ball and chain, the ball and chain guard. And we're going to rescue Princess Zelda and take her to the sanctuary, where she belongs. This guy is not very tough, as you can see. He can do a lot of damage, I think, if he hits you, but unlike before, I'm not going to demonstrate that for you. You can just take my word. So this is the big key. Normally, that'd be the boss key in most other Zelda games, and uh, has the same function here. Unlocks one big lock that you need to get through in any given dungeon. Why do you listen carefully? Why am I giving her my normal... My normal boomy man voice, I don't know. Alright, so she's going to follow us here. Whenever, when I was little and I wasn't paying much attention to the actual story of this game, you know, my reading skills weren't fully fleshed out, or maybe it was just my attention span, because I actually did have quite, quite high reading skills as a child. Anyway. I always used to wonder, like, who exactly this person was and why she was following me and wearing, like, a nurse's uniform. It doesn't really look like a royal dress to me. It looks like she has a little white hat and a white gown like a nurse. I don't know. Maybe I was just a fucking stupid kid. Uh, actually, there's no maybe about that. I was a fucking stupid kid. <laughs> that didn't even make physical sense to happen. And yet it's still, it was still glorious. I'm gonna freeze this guy and then hurt him twice and just leave him to think about what he's done. That's worse than any death. 
Death is too good for that fucker. So she's going to lead us through here. We're going to go to the throne room and escape through the secret passage. I've always wondered, those ones with the short swords and the little tiny shields, they don't attack you at all. Well, they'll hurt you if you run into them, don't get me wrong, but they don't go after you like the other guys do. I've always wondered what made those two kinds of guards different. This was my first Zelda game as a kid. I never played the original or Zelda 2. And thank God, because those games are still too hard for me, even now. I wouldn't have been able to... I would not have been able to get very far in those games as a kid. But I could beat this one pretty much by myself. Alright, so she's telling us we better get our lantern out, because we're gonna... Gonna need that to light some lights and, uh... Show the way once we're in here. Pushing it from the left. I'm constantly demonstrating what a pro I am at this game. I am a... I am a shining example of expertise. So, what made me want to play this game is that... It's getting a sequel this next week in America. It's called The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. It's a game for the Nintendo 3DS system, the handheld system. I am extremely excited about that. I can't quit thinking about it. It's getting pretty good reviews overall so far. So I thought, hey, if I'm that excited for it, I'll um, do a little treat for myself and my subscribers, all two of them, and uh, I'll play a, play a Link to the Past. It's uh, been a couple of years since I last played this, so it has an itch to be scratched. This doesn't mean Yoshi's Island isn't going to be done anymore. In fact, I'm probably going to record a couple of episodes of that after this. But, nothing wrong with having two LPs going at once, I think. Gives some variety both to me and to you. If you've noticed, I've been gone for the last week. It's mainly because I've been searching for a new job. I already have a job. I don't mind my job. It's a pretty fun, pretty fun time. Extremely easy, but doesn't quite pay well enough. It pays the bills, just barely. So I've been job hunting recently, and also, I've still been sick, as you might be able to tell from my voice. I think I sound better than I did last week when I was recording Yoshi's Island, but I'm still, still a little ill. I have this cold that just won't go away. It drives my girlfriend crazy. She not crazy in a way that you want to drive your girlfriend like, oh man, it drives her crazy. No, I mean it makes her angry. <laughs> she keeps threatening to punch me in the throat as I cough. I cough very loudly. You might not be able to tell from these recordings, but I have a very I have a very loud voice. Obviously I'm not gonna demonstrate because I don't wanna fuck up my audio quality, you know. What do they call it, uh, making the, I don't want to make the needle or whatever go into the red. I know there's a term for it, crack the audio. What the fuck ever. I don't want to put you guys through that, because that's going to pop the audio. That's right. Because I'm just using a cheap headset microphone. I don't have a pop filter. I don't even edit these videos. I just record, and the uh, recording program I use renders them for me. Ooh, I'm in... I better start paying more actual attention to what's going on, because I am going to get killed by a bunch of fucking rats and bats in a fucking basement. And that's going to be really, really embarrassing. I don't think I've ever died this early into this game. This isn't a game I really die while playing in the first place. Um... It's harder, it's at its hardest early on, when you only have the three hearts. Obviously, once you get, like, five or six hearts, you don't really die often. Or, I mean, I'm sure some people do, but I, I don't really. Especially once you get bottles, and, uh, you've access to bottles and fairies. Oh, pull that switch over there. That's specific, but I know it's this one. The other one will cause snakes to fall. Hell, I'll go ahead and demonstrate. And then get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so. Made it out of there barely alive with half a heart. 
We're going to go talk to the priest here at the sanctuary, and he's going to look after Zelda for us. And uh, nothing bad is going to happen, ever. Nothing at all, because Zelda never gets kidnapped in these games, so she's going to be completely safe here the entire time. Uh, getting kidnapped, it's not really something you do as a member of royalty, especially not a princess. Uh, that would just be... That would be unbecoming of a young lady such as Princess Zelda to get kidnapped constantly. Well, to be fair, any one Zelda doesn't really get kidnapped constantly. Just her and her descendants and, and uh, ancestors get kidnapped. In equal measure, they all have that propensity. Oh yeah, I was being sarcastic when I said they never got kidnapped. I should have made that more clear. But, uh... We've rescued Princess Zelda, and she is in the safe hands of the priest, where nothing bad will ever happen to her. So we're going to go ahead and call this one episode. Uh, we'll come back. I'm going to actually record another one immediately. And we're going to go ahead and tackle the first dungeon and get things really rolling here. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.